Hey everybody, welcome back for another mod overview as part of the Red Alert Anniversary Celebrations. I hope you're having a good time so far. Uh, this mod is a little bit on the unusual side. Uh, it seems to be single player only. I'm not sure if there's a viable way to play this with multiplayer. Uh, it's limited to having three factions, so USA, China, and Russia. You can see in here, uh, according to the ModDB page, it's essentially a mod aiming to bring some elements from CNC General Zero Hour into the kind of RA2 engine, uh, which is interesting idea uh it's quite impressive some of the work that's actually gone into this mod uh, it's a little rough around the edges uh, and it is in primarily uh, chinese mandarin i believe so bear that in mind that navigating menus and stuff like that is going to be a little bit finicky but i'll show you everything you need to know uh, to be able to get you to use this locally and run it and everything else uh, but you can go to the mod db page uh, similar to most other ra2 mods you basically go to the file section download a zip uh, and then you want to extract that zip into your local Red Alert 2 install slash your is revenge. Uh, one of the questions that asks itself here is where is GLA? Uh, the forces are mostly eliminated in the first GLA war, so they have some reasoning here behind why it's not included. Um, so far, the only vi vi viable way, I guess, to try this out is to go up with some skirmishes against the AI. Uh, now, I've had some difficulties getting this running locally on my machine. For reference, it's a Windows. Uh, it's currently running Windows 11, so it's a little bit uh, updated. So it's been quite finicky to get this to work and to record. So in order to do this, I am running it in a windowed mode, uh, but it should look fine on, on the recording. Um, but yeah, once you have this downloaded uh, and extracted and unzipped and everything else, um, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what's included with the game client with this, uh, you'll want to launch the game. You'll get this little pop-up launcher. Uh, I got this a little bit translated so the community was nice enough. Uh, so this is basically windowed mode. This is, uh, I think, full screen mode, more or less, or non-windowed. Uh, for recording purposes, we're going to use windowed mode. Uh, this happens uh, when I initially go to launch this. So it'll give you a whole da -da 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 error message to fix this. Uh, right click on the executable, go into properties, uh, compatibility, and you're going to want to run it in reduced color mode. I put this down to 16, hit apply, and now it should launch uh, correctly. There it is. Pretty cool. Uh, so this is a little tip for you if you have any issues getting it installed. Of course, you can also ping us on the Anniversary Discord. I'm sure the mod creator there will be able to help you out if you have any difficulties. Now, as mentioned, this menu and stuff is in Mandarin, so it is going to take a little bit of working around to try and know what's going on. And the key things you really need to know is this one here is for settings. And here you can change the resolution. Um, you can change the sound volume levels here too. Couldn't tell you what the rest of it is. I'm pretty sure it matches up quite nicely to the default Yuri's Revenge menus, so there's that. Up here in the very top is your single player. Uh, the top option here is for campaign missions, however, these do not work. You can go in, try and run one, it'll just crash uh, from my experience. This, I believe, is just like a load save state, so if you don't have, if you haven't tried to run the single player, this should be great aid for you. And then this third option here will be for skirmishes, which is what we're interested in checking out. So, in here, under the skirmish menu, it's a very uh, bare bones in terms of what's actually included in it and what you can actually do or not do. Um, we have three factions, so you've got the USA, uh, Russia, and then you have China. Um, three AI difficulties, as far as I'm aware, easy, normal, and hard. As previously mentioned, having it on easy and hard works okay. Whenever I've tried to run it on normal, it seems to crash out. Uh, so be aware of that. This one here seems to be like kind of a blank uh, placeholder, so you can just play the game without any AI on the map. Uh, so bear that in mind. Bunch of settings here. I'm sure these line up quite with the original RA2 client. If you want to do a one for one mapping and figure out what they all mean, by all means go ahead. Uh, but we're going to be hopping in and trying out a few different uh, a few different games. So in order to give you a, a good idea in terms of what's actually available in here tech-wise, I'm actually going to play through without an opponent for the first couple of games, uh, just to show you each of the factions and what their, their skill tech tree looks like, and as well as their structures and units. Uh, so let's go into it. First up we're going to play as America. Uh, they have their custom MCV models, pretty cool. A cold fusion reactor for their power plant. <laughs> the first couple of times I play this, it's very hard to keep a straight face with the trademark music. 
but uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. It's a fun idea. They do some cool technical things in this mod. Uh, like obviously the models and stuff are all, as far as I'm aware, unique. Uh, and again, they're, they're trying to have some take on like the CNC zero hour uh, aspects of the game. So that's something to bear in mind. But yeah, we have our barracks. We'll get a supply center now. That's essentially your refinery. Uh, pillboxes here, your defensive structure. They're actually stealthed by default. Or they look stealthed, they, whatever way they've designed it. It's a pretty neat effect. And you can see the AoE around them. Uh, the missile bunker here also is a ground uh, attacking defensive structure. We'll see that now in a second. So you'll see I can uh, force fire the ground. I'm not sure if we can hit air units. I mean, there's one way we can find out. We can try hit the Chinook. Yeah. So it does quite heavy damage against the uh, the air units. Having a Chinook as uh, your harvester is a neat idea too. Uh, so here's a war factory. You can see like the original like zero hour ally style logo on it. That's pretty cool, American. So Crusader tanks, uh, Humvees, Sentry drones, landing craft, ambulance, Sheridan, Avengers. We get one of each of these and show them off a little bit. You can see here I've unlocked access to Pathfinder tech. So Pathfinder is essentially like snipers, here it is. It's a cool idea, like it's kind of stealthed in a little bush cameo, that's cool. I appreciate it. Uh, we've gotten our war factory, so you can see here the Crusader tanks, kind of very similar to your basic like Grizzly tank or your Rhino tank. Uh, here you have the Humvees. That's pretty cool, cool idea. So they seem to have some rocket capabilities as well as machine gun. Uh, here you've got like the hover transport vehicle, quite fast. Uh, as far as I know, you can put tanks into this too. So you can get this loaded up and then unload it, pretty effective. You have an ambulance here, uh, so you can have the guy get damaged, go inside of it. Uh, I'm not actually sure how the healing works or if this is just intended as an APC. Uh, I guess it might just be intended as an APC. It doesn't seem to be healing a huge amount, but we'll, we'll leave them next to it and see. Uh, what else we got? Here we have... Uh, of course, it's impossible to tell from the, from the hoverovers. Trying to figure out a way to demonstrate this effectively when you don't speak Mandarin is a little bit difficult, uh, but hopefully it's, it's of some insight. Uh, so here's the Avenger. You can see it does kind of this light damage. Um, it may be a case that it's only for air units, in which case we should be able to test against the Chinook here. Uh, if I can actually hit it. So you can see here it says target located, or target locked. Not sure if it'll actually fire a missile at it. Fair enough. Um, Next up, what do we got here? We got Tactical Air Control. Let's we'll try this out. Uh, we get the map by default after deploying our conyard as well, something worth noting. Uh, so here's the air control. It's pretty funky build animation. And you have access now to build the uh, command sheet or the stealth command sheet, which would function as you may expect. Uh, we do have access to a couple of tech units, uh, tech abilities here at no fly zone. I believe this prevents air units in a certain area of effect, and then a supersonic airstrike, as you can imagine what that does. Uh, we'll get the strategy center next. So here's the Comanche doing his thing, and the stealth Comanche here. Pretty cool. Yeah, so strategy center, we'll get that down. Has us some low power, but it gives us ability, a couple of abilities here. Um, a tactical energy shield and a, uh, a fake build drop by the looks of it. We'll see what that effect does. Uh, we'll get another cold fusion reactor down. Like the models and stuff for this look really good. Um, it's it, it's cool, right? Uh, what else we got access to now? A few more defensive structures. So we got a shield barrier and a particle cannon uplink. Sounds like that would be Building. worthwhile investing in. Reinforcements ready. Uh, so the no-fly zone, just to demonstrate, I can pop it here. You can see... Uh, I'm not sure if it'll affect friendly units, it's likely only for... 
<laughs> uh, enemy units. The effects in it, pretty damn cool. Shield battery, we'll get this up and running. Uh, again, trademark stuff from the likes of StarCraft. Some interesting voice line decisions that they opted for. Uh, we seem to have unlocked access to a big tank from the crate, that's cool. So we get our cold fusion reactor down. Oof, what else we got? A supply drop zone, we get one of these, so if you're familiar with Zero Hour, it's traditionally how you get your eco. Uh, here we have a... Clavatorier? Uh, you also have an ice fly, which I'm guessing is like a scouting drone. So here's the Clavatorier. So it's kind of like an AoE splash damage effect. That's cool. And then here's the little scout drone. Uh, called the Ice Spy. It's clever. Clever take. Uh, so supply drop zone. Here this is. Uh, Crusader upgrade. We probably want to get the observation post. <laughs> the, the choice of music is really interesting. Uh, here's the fake build drop. So we'll do it here. See what it does. <laughs> sure. All right. Supersonic airstrike. Um, there's the UN crate supplies coming in effective. Giving some serious cash. Uh, we'll try the supersonic airstrike on these. See how much damage it does. Pretty damn brutal. Cars here having a good time. Uh, particle cannon uplink, we'll get one of those. Uh, the observation post, we'll pop this down. Uh, we now have a couple more additional superpowers. So we have Chinese reinforcements, Russian reinforcements. Uh, we can now build an airborne drone carrier. That sounds hella good. Uh, we also have uh, Boreal. Alright, uh, we also have this Crusader upgrade package, so we'll see what that uh, enables us to do. Here's the uh, the hero unit. Pretty crazy, kind of looks like a Warhammer 40k Space Marine, sure. As you can see, it does a bit of damage and then it calls down some kind of orbital environment. Uh, Crusader Upgrader Post goes on this thing. Alright. And then we can build a Tomahawk Comanche. Uh, any extra units in here? We can also build a Command Crusader. As well as an Upgraded Crusader. I can only build one of these, so this is like a hero tank unit. Uh, the particle cannon uplink, of course we'll get that so we can show it off. But it's uh, it's a very ambitious, like the things that they're doing in the engine is really cool, right? Uh, the only th concern, like in its current state, you're sort of limited in what you can do. Like you can have uh, skirmishes against the AI. Uh, we're trying to get it set up with another player, I'm not sure how viable it is. Um, but in terms of showing off like the kind of things that you can do with the tech, uh, within the RA engine is impressive. Uh, here's like your commander tank. So you can see how different that is. Cool that they have the indications in game as well to let you know what's what. Uh, this is I think one of the little sentry drones. One of these guys. Uh, what are they called? Sentry drone. So it seems to be cloaked and you can run it across the map. Um, what else? Are we missing anything? We'll want to show off the particle cannon once that becomes available. Uh, Chinese reinforcements. I guess we'll get some of that. So this drops off a whole bunch of these tanks, as well as this. Again, when we have a look at the Chinese faction, we'll have a better insight into what these specific units are. But it's pretty cool that they've enabled it so that you can get it. And then the Russian reinforcements, something similar. It gives you a shipment of a bunch of Russian units. It's a pretty cool idea. Uh, custom voicing 
for a whole bunch of these units, it sounds like, too. Uh, really cool. No idea what buff, debuff this does. Um, but hey, let's make it rain, right? We're here for a good time. <laughs> uh, what else can we show? I, mean, I think we've shown off all the vehicles for the most part, all the air units. Uh, this thing I got in a crate, no idea what it is. Seems to do like a big rail cannon shot. It's pretty cool. Uh, we can build these Dragon Slayer, it's something we haven't tested yet. Here's the Sheridan. Pretty cool. <laughs> Seeing some of the, uh, let's say, recycled voice lines and stuff from other uh, games is a little bit weird. Uh, Particle Cannon, since this is the last thing we really have to test, I guess we'll try it on our Conyard. Uh, here's the Dragon Slayer, using the probe sound effect from StarCraft 2, I want to say. It's a pretty cool model, I like the, the shielding effects and stuff on it. Um, yeah, I'm not, re not really sure what else I can really say about this specific faction. We'll try it on our Conyard, uh, which is this structure here. Whoops. There we go. So it does kind of an AoE. You don't seem to be able to move it like in the original like zero hour or whatever, but you know, there's only so much you can do with your tech. Um Yeah. I mean it's a fully it's a fully fleshed faction for the most part. Uh they have their, their tech advancements, like you can go through this, the strategy center and the observation posts seem to be like the kind of branching techs. Uh, strategy center giving you some higher tech and then the observation post also unlocking things like reinforcements is a cool idea. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's, I think that's going to do it for a look at the American faction. Let's have a look at, uh, let's take a look at one of the other ones now. Alright, so next up we're going to have a look at the Russian faction that they have in the game. Uh, I guess we'll go with a traditional red colour for the Russians. Uh, we're going to play on a different map. Uh, I happen to find this one. There is a whole bunch of custom maps and stuff in here. Uh, from what I can see, a lot of them just seem to be the base or A2 maps, but I do know that included with the installer, there's a bunch of extra Yuri's Revenge maps. Uh, there's some down here, some that don't work. <laughs> I mean, some of them named uh, conspicuously, perhaps but should have been removed before the mod was uploaded to ModDB, but that's fair enough. Um, but yeah, let's go, let's go with the, the traditional El, El Dorado style map, I believe. Uh, and pop into it and see what the, the faction plays like, how similar it is, how different it is to the uh, the American faction. So again, all custom sprites, it looks like, or SHPs or unit models, whatever you want to refer to them as. Vox I don't think they're, maybe they're voxels, I don't know. Uh, but here's the conscript station, so this lets you get your infantry. Uh, you need to get a power plant, so get the power plant up. You'll notice that we don't seem to really have access to an early... Um, to an early refinery. It seems to be a little bit down the tech path. Uh, so here's our air pad. So you can build Yak straight out the gate. It's kind of a cool idea. Uh, in terms of the units and defensive structures, we have a howitzer and we have a, uh, a BMRT turret. So here's the howitzer. We'll get the BMR BMRT turret next. Uh, can't, don't seem to be able to force fire this, so we'll have to see it in action against the AI opponent. And the BMR, BMRT turret. It's pretty cool. Uh, go for the War Factory. Uh, you can see we have some super abilities here. Uh, the, the mod creators have a bit of fun with it, I guess, in terms of what they're calling their superpowers and stuff. Uh, you know, like vodka overdose. Uh, I'm guessing it gives you a temporary buff to your uh, infantry. Uh, so here's the War Factory, and with the War Factory we then unlock access to the Supply Center. And I believe the Supply Center is like the equivalent of a uh, refinery, so to speak. In terms of our units section here, we've got a what is it? A T Bob. We have a BMP. We have an IM War 80, uh, or the T Saw from the T T T 80U. So this is like your standard issue tank, kind of like your tier one tank for the Soviets. Uh, here's the BMP. Seems to have kind of a a nice machine gun, but also missiles. Acts like an APC. It's pretty cool. 
Uh, we have the IMOR 80. Uh, meanwhile, here's the Ak. Sounds like it's using the voice lines from Red Alert 1. Uh, but it does strafing runs. So you can kind of see the general attack pattern it would follow. Uh, seem to have knocked out my power accidentally with some splash damage from the fire. But the supply center is here. Uh, and you can see the, the harvester in action right here behind it. Uh, also, we're not only, of course, like the custom soundtrack we're playing is the Russian, so they've got more Soviet influence type music. Uh, this is the IMR 80, so it seems to have a repair circle around it, so if vehicles are injured uh, within that threshold, I imagine it'll auto repair. As you can see here, yeah, that is the case. Uh, we've got a mortar cycle, what it looks like. It uh, looks like it's stealthed when it's static. You can shoot, has very long range. As you would expect with a mortar, it's pretty cool. Uh, Tor M1 AA system, so anti air. Uh, what's this? Natural gas purchase. Not quite sure what benefit that's going to give you. Uh, but here's the anti air system vehicle. Pretty cool. Uh, what do we got? We got a OB. I-279N uh, We have an assault tank as well So here's the OB, kind of a slightly beefier tank compared to the more basic T-80V uh, And then we have the assault tank here Looks like it has a huge uh, missile uh, turret on top of it So it fires that off. Uh, looks like the power plant exploded there a little bit and then just said oh shit because why not? Uh, Alright, uh, looks like we can get an ADS center. That seems to be the next natural progression. I think we've tested everything else here so far. So it's it's interesting right like all these all these structures and units look really nice. Um, as mentioned before I do wish the the models fleshed out a little bit more but I, I like the aesthetic and stuff that we have going like the Soviet buildings feel very unique compared to say the allied buildings uh, this is giving us access to a few things so we now have a graphite bomb uh, grandfather of all bombs sounds ominous uh, we also have an AK-130 looks like a twin barreled howitzer style thing uh, you have spy and then we have a general Mega Tronovana? Sounds good. Uh, you have the spy here. Uh, cool, they went with a female model for it. It's a little bit different, I like it. Here's the AK-130, looks like it's kind of like a Grand Cannon. Uh, whoops, wrong button. Uh, but with this, I guess you can uh, interpret it as basically a Grand Cannon, right? And there's also the orbital uplink here. Some more power going on. Uh, what else? We have a wreck truck. Uh, I'm guessing this is like a demo truck. It will blow up on attack. We have another landing craft. So if you want to get your vehicles Unit across ready. water, that's a good way to go. Uh, we have an MI-8. Ah, uh, oh, wreck truck is just the um, the harvester. Okay, okay, I see. We're learning. Unit ready. Alright, so here's the Soviet hovercraft. Again, you can put vehicles inside of it if you wish. Like so. Uh, so here's the orbital uplink. This should give you your super weapon ability, I believe. Uh, so we have here the orbital downpour. Uh, we'll scout the map a little bit. Uh, the maps themselves seem to just, you know, use the normal default tile set. I think the, the thing that this mod is more so uh, emphasizing is like the own unique structures, units, capabilities, warheads and stuff of the vehicles and structures. It's usually your MLRS type vehicle. Uh, here's the Havoc. It seems to like do a little reticle around the area you're targeting. Or is this? This is the IL-76. 
It's gonna be a little bit like of like an iron cannon bombardment style. This is the havoc. So this is a heavy, um, heavy fire, both the cannon type and machine gun. Looks of it, pretty cool. Um, we're out of power. I need to fix that so we can charge up the rest of our super weapons. What else we got? Building construction complete. Do do do. Cannot deploy here. There's the MI8. So the MI8 is the one that has the reticle here. Uh, not quite sure what's up with the IL-76. If I already have one, I don't think I do. Ah, uh, yeah, I didn't have a free helipad, so you need the helipad for the IL-76. Cool. Uh, we're still low power. Okay. Unit ready. Here's the IL-76. So it does a little bombing run. It's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool effect. Uh, my power doesn't seem to be going up at all. I don't know if I need to like sell the one here, uh, or I'm not sure if this is bugged out. Building. Construction complete. There we go. Okay, it's coming back. Uh, we don't seem to have a our radar back though, which is a little bit worrying. Um, not really sure what's up with that. But our super weapons are charging, so we will be able to show those off, which is the main thing. So, you can see the mod, you know, language barriers aside, like there is quite a lot in this. I can imagine having some fun in a couple of matchups uh, against the AI, which we'll definitely try and demo uh, as part of this video. But from there, we're just trying to get a good idea in terms of what's actually available. The AI behavior, from what I have found, uh, is quite aggressive. It tends to, uh, even on the easy difficulties, uh, be super pushy, uh, tending to rush in with a bunch of engineers as well. So you definitely need to be on top of your game when you're coming up against the AI. If you are not, then uh, your base is easily going to get absolutely destroyed. And it's very difficult to try and, you know, go through every single structure and vehicle and everything else while dealing with that stuff. Um, so that's the reasoning behind why we're doing this outside of a 1v1 against the AI. Um, just for the walls, we can see if these auto link. I imagine it will, similar to previous red alerts. Nice. So you can set up these defenses in whatever way you want. It's pretty cool. Again, natural gas purchase, just because. Uh, ah, okay, it seems to, natural gas purchase seems to just absolutely inflate the crap out of your power. Uh, we can hear the missiles getting ready to be fired, the graphite bomb. You can see it here. It's pretty cool, you got the on and the off. Uh, I guess we'll put our bunch of our units over here somewhere. Uh, we can use the graphite bomb test on them. Our units do look very nice. Uh, orbital downpour. Also ready. Guess we'll go for the orbital downpour first since we're here. As you can see, it's kind of an AoE. Oh, that's a cool effect. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, that's kind of cool. That's definitely different. Uh, we'll go over here, we should probably spam a few vehicles just to test. Uh, maybe a second war factory. 
Graphite bomb. I guess we'll go over here beside the air center so you can see what damage it might do to the actual structures. We get the graphite bomb around here. Alright, I guess maybe it does like a, a debuff on vehicles or similar. It didn't seem overly effective. And then you have the grandfather of all bombs here, so I'm expecting, especially with a name like that, big things. Um, but I guess we'll find it. In fact, you know what? We should test this on. We should test it on our Conyard because it's the last thing we really need to test here. Alright. Uh, we're almost there. Come on, guys. Get in here. Alright. Okay. We're kind of like a psychic dominator style damage. Wasn't quite what I was expecting. But uh, pretty cool. So I think that's a good look in terms of what the uh, what the Russian faction here has to offer. Pretty cool. Uh, pretty wide variety of units. The like you say, the architecture that looks pretty cool, pretty Soviet. Uh, different to like the base game Soviet sort of look. Uh, and again, kind of tying in more towards the the uh, zero hour style of uh, structures, which is cool. We might do one more orbital downpour since we're here, uh, and then we'll switch on over to the third faction. Uh, which will be the Chinese faction. Uh, here. In come the satellites. <laughs> like the graphical effects and stuff are really cool. Uh, a little bit silly, but it's, it's pretty fun. Like they'll absolutely destroy these structures. So from a balance perspective, if you let your opponent get all the way up to that high level tech, you're in trouble. Uh, cool to see the damage structures too, like the, the leaning tower and stuff like that. It's very cool. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna do it for a look at the uh, the Russian faction. Let's move on to the uh, next one. All right, next up we're gonna go with China. I'd be very interested to see how they've gone about doing the sprites for this faction. Uh, like the Soviets in Americas, you can see how it'll be easily aligned with some of the existing assets, but this uh, will be like kind of totally new. I like the aesthetic of it already. It looks very cool. Uh, playing it on a snow map. So there's your reactor. Uh, we'll go for a supply center next. Again, you got custom music for the faction. Uh, you can see it using the emblems from Zero Hour. So get the supply center down. Get a war factory. Complete. Being able to get it before the racks too, interesting. That uh, seems to have unlocked access to this uh, cluster mine ability. Get ourselves a racks and get some more power. The racks seems to give us radar. Interesting. Get our nuke reactor going. There's an ability to get a bunker. Maybe you'll be able to link two of them up, I'd say. Gatling cannon, so kind of Yuri-esque. And in terms of the basic infantry, you've got the Red Guard, similar to Zero Hour tank hunters. Uh, what looks like <laughs> a waifu mine? Okay. Does it detonate? Ah, okay, it deploys. Interesting. That's a cool idea. Uh, in terms of vehicles, you've got supply trucks. Um, an armed MCV, huh? Let's pick up some you got a battlemaster tank, uh, listening outpost, dragon tank, gatling tank, troop crawler, and landing craft. Uh, meanwhile, we'll get an airfield going over here. Gatling cannon. We can pop this down. I like the animation on the conyards too. I think it's all custom for the red rear two engines, so they've done a lot of work with it. I'm not quite sure what this bunker ability is. I guess we'll find out. 
Uh, I'll build one and put a few infantry in it anyway, just in case it's needed. Uh, okay, just spawns a bunker with a whole bunch of infantry in it. That's cool. It's a nice idea. Um, over here you can see things like the dragon tank uh, doing the flame effects. It's pretty cool. Uh, here you have the whistling outposts. Actually, there's a couple of infantry in it. Uh, I can hold up to four, it looks like, and it's stealthed by default. Here we have the troop crawler doing some shooting. Uh, has a couple of infantry in it as well by default. It's kind of nice. Uh, here we have the airfield, and we'll get the uh, propaganda center. So with the airfield, we can get um, what looks like I-8. All right, we'll check these out. That's a pretty cool looking vehicle, pretty slim. Uh, propaganda Center. That's a really cool model, I like it. Uh, we can also get the MiG 1.44, we can get a Helix Chopper. Uh, we can get an Inferno Cannon, so we'll get a couple of those. Uh, in terms of units here, we have a Spy, we have uh, Miao Xiai. Yeah, apologies if I'm pronouncing these awfully wrong. Uh, cluster mine, let's try it out. Let's pop it down here. Does it like just drop them as mines or does it do a damage? Uh, okay, so it does like an AoE with a whole bunch of these that the enemy can walk on. That's cool. Uh, Wei Chang, I think these are, these are like, uh, like the, the Great Wall, right? It's a very cool effect. Really like the wall. You can build a nuke missile, so we're definitely going to get that. Uh, we can build an internet center and a Tommy Center, okay. Uh, they're doing a lot with this faction. Like, it looks really nice. Construction complete. Uh, move these out of the way. Uh, we'll get the Internet Center down. Get some more power. Construction complete. Nice, and uh, the Kami Center. So with the Internet Center, we've got access to <laughs> satellite fuck, as they call it. Okay, uh, we got a nuke missile here. We're gonna be wanting that. Uh, gonna get the Kami Center before we get power back up, I guess. There we go. Complete. Okay, gonna need a lot more power by the looks of things. Now the bunker ability's ready again. Fake units is ability we have. Propaganda tower. Um, not quite sure what this will do. Guess it just puts down a tower. Maybe it converts the enemy infantry units temporarily. We'll see it possibly against the AI if we get a chance. Uh, we can now build a forward command as well. So let's get that going. Uh, we can build a... Black Maying. Construction complete. Uh, we can build nuclear tanks. Or is it transfer? It transfers the tanks to nuclear tanks? Not quite sure. You have to use it on vehicles. Oh yeah, so you can see this guy. Uh, this guy specifically has the, the rad icon above him. So I guess it buffs his damage. Uh, foxtail melee and rifles. Uh, is it here? Guess again, it's like a similar tank buff, maybe? Uh, fake units? It's a lot of fake units it gives you, okay. Sure, why not? Uh. <laughs> okay, when you attack it, sure, it makes a fart noise. Why not? Why not? Why wouldn't it do that, guys? Uh, so yeah, this one is doing a lot. Forward command. Uh, guess you want that here, right? Defenders of peace. Where is the battle? Move order confirmed. Like it looks really nice. Look, look at this. This looks really nice. Uh, satellite fuck. Sure. You can have full vision of the map. Pretty cool. Um. Nukes charging up, so we have the neutron, I guess the neutron mine here. 
Make these nuclear, may as well. Uh, uh, artillery barrage. Not quite sure what's up with this. I don't seem to be able to use it. Oh, I can. Okay. Um, guess we'll do it here. See how it looks. Yeah, there it is. Wow. Okay, so it's kind of big AoE damage. Nice. Uh, neutron mine's almost there. It's almost a shame to ruin the base with it, but that's what we're here for. Um, Overlord tank. Project 571. Uh, advanced battle master and a troop crawler. Do we have the troop crawler before? So these are, this, these are pretty big tanks. Pretty cool. This is the project, uh, what was it called? Project 571? Those missile, I'm guessing it's kind of like a V2, those long range missile attacks. Fires off a giant rocket. Yeah. And in the coming. Wow, that's effective. Balance needed. Seems cool though. Right here. Move order confirmed. Uh, yeah, propaganda tower. Again, we've used that before. Uh, the big one now is the neutron uh, mine, which doesn't seem to be as effective as the like cluster mine type stuff. Nuclear missile is ready, General. Uh, nuke strike, however, is bound to be super cool. Yes. Hmm. Which do we want to? Which do we want to test there? Uh, we've done the cluster mine. The neutron mine probably not going to be as effective or impactful. So if we put these all up here and try the neutron mine on them, let's do it like here. Yeah, so it just deploys the mines. Okay, so if we charge all our infantry back towards the base, uh, we can now fire off our nuke strike and see just how damaging it actually is. Ooh. Nice. I like the little um, the implant option that it seems to have too, where it just kind of embeds in the ground before it detonates. Gives you that little bit of fear. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool, pretty cool. But all in all, yeah, it's a, I think it's a good look at the China faction. Uh, so that's all all three factions now at this point that we've had a brief look at. Let's try some matches against uh, against the AI. GGs. All right, we're going to try out a three v three here and see how it goes. Uh, I put myself a two brutal AI against two easy AI and one hard AI. Uh, no idea how this is going to work out, probably going to get my ass kicked, but I'm really curious just to see how this actually handles and plays. I suspect it could be good fun, uh, but let's let's pop in and see how it goes. I'm playing as the Chinese faction, again, this time on a non-snow map, so we can have a look at the units on kind of the more standard terrain. Uh, you start with plenty of cash as well, so like worrying about refineries and stuff early on doesn't seem to be a huge, huge ordeal. Okay, here's a bridge, so the enemy is likely to come across this way. Uh, get the barracks down, get ourselves a war factory. So you can see our allies here, we can have a look at how they're building. We got some units up here, uh, we'll scout the shoreline. I don't think there's a way down here, but you never can be too careful with these things. Uh, supply truck, get a couple of these, get a bunch of battle master tanks, a couple of dragoons, a couple of gatling tanks. Seems like a good idea. Our allies garrison the structure here, so that's cool. Uh, airfield, not so much propaganda center, more so. Uh, you can see here they're using a landing craft to come into the base. Uh, so they are actually, the AI is actually programmed to use these things and it's using all the engineers here to try and capture my stuff which I do not appreciate one bit. Wow. Uh, okay, propaganda center, so we're teching up 
Gonna get a whole bunch more Gatling stuff around the base. Uh, you can see we've got a whole bunch of tanks. Get over here, kill these things. Uh, get a nuke reactor, get a Gatling cannon, get some more Gatling cannons. You can't take your eyes off like the AI for two seconds or does this stuff. Uh, and I think now you're getting a good idea of why I'm not... I have to separately have a look at the individual factions and what they can do. Because... Wow. Uh, Inferno cannon. Sure. But there's your no-fly zone ability. Uh, our bunker... So you can see the AIs are kind of attacking a little bit here. I mean, we can help out a little bit. We have this bunker super ability, so we can pop our own bunker here. Um, we want we want more tanks. Okay, okay. Still in it. We're doing all right. Uh, we get a nuke missile. We get the internet centered down. More power. Uh, we can do the cluster mine ability, which actually seem to be pretty effective. Where are they actually attacking from? Like here. Get some get some missiles going down. Get a propaganda tower too. Nice. Cluster missiles coming in effective here. Uh, get some more power. What else do you want? Uh, the nuke missile we can pop down. Our power is low. Our is under and you can see just the amount of super weapons and abilities currently going on on the bottom right of the screen is <laughs> crazy. Uh, so this escalates super quick. China is under Unit lost. Uh, it'd be nice Our if we could use the nuke against an opponent, but... Yeah, let's just go for it. Let's see what we get on. Our ally is under attack. Unit lost. Uh, so let's get our power or our radar, which is actually our Unit barracks lost. as well. Unit lost. Unit lost. Construction complete. Unit lost. Unit lost. China is under attack. Unit lost. Uh, I need to be keep building a bunch of stuff. Unit lost. Our power is low. Unit lost. Our ally is under attack. Unit lost. Construction. So it's pretty fun. Unit lost. Uh, an intense Unit like lost. wow. Unit lost. China is under attack. Unit lost. Like stuff is just popping off. Ally is under attack. Unit lost. Uh, Our nuclear tanks. Unit lost. China is under I think we're about to die here. Uh, unless I can get some anti-air. Comanches over here, I think. I think their Comanches are going to kill my Conyard. Down it goes. No! Unit lost. Let me help. Okay, at this point all I can do is build tank hunters and you can see the enemies dropping in all the ground units. What? Whoops. Uh, one of the, the risks of running it in windowed mode, accidentally moving it on the screen. But yeah, I think it's going to be GG. Wow. Like just the rate of growth of the AI is huge. <laughs> Alright, well I guess it's going to be GG. I can't build anything anymore, so we'll pop on out and go into uh, another skirmish. It's pretty fun. Uh, okay, this time we're going to go with a, a 2v2 setup uh, with... Uh, my ally being hard AI, we'll go against 
two of the easy AI, let's say. Um, we'll spawn on one and two, and they'll take three and four. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what we'll see if the American structures and stuff look on a snow map. Should be interesting. Let's go. Music hype. All right, fusion reactor. Get a supply center down. Take care of our eco. Uh, barracks. War factory. Cost three fifty. Not cheaper, but I think we're better off to have some than not have any. Okay, here he comes. Looks like this is where they're coming from, and of course they're going with the mass infantry push instead of the mass tanks early on. It's kind of my fault for not optimizing for that. Uh, get some Chinooks, get the eco situation sorted, a couple of Humvees, a couple of Crusader tanks. Uh, I guess maybe a couple of Sheridan tanks too. Uh, next up we'll get the tactical air control. Let's see our allies already pumping up the tech. Uh, the Comanches actually seem pretty useful, so I guess we'll go with those. Oh, that's the that's the enemy AI. That, that's not that's not my ally. You can see him coming with the engineers here and here. Get him! No! <laughs> God damn it! Oh, that's too funny to not include in this. So that'll give you an idea in terms of just how aggressive the AI is with this stuff. Uh, maybe we can still pull this back, you know. It's also the fact that they cap, they they sell the structure. They don't just like capture it and leave it. It's like no, 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 no. You're not, you're not having that. Uh, meanwhile, the AI is doing pretty good. We can have an idea of what their their builds like. Guess we're not getting across that that bridge. Here come the troop transports. They're so persistent with those troop transports with the uh, infantry drops. It's so effective. Um. I mean, we're live. I don't know how, but we are. I guess we'll try push into the green here, see if we can do damage. Ah, the missile, so the missile turret thing here is anti-air as well. It's worth known. Let's go! Ally seems to be doing A-OK. -okay. Well, we got one of the structures. <laughs> wow, that AI base. That's so satisfying. I really like the, the Chinese structures. Uh, I mean, they all look great. They're all super unique. Like, they, they're taking a good chunk of the uh, the Zero Hour inspiration and, like, really making it their own with the Ori 2 engine. Super cool. Uh, but that's going to do it for... <laughs> this is absolutely abysmal 2v2, my god, man. Uh, but yeah, GG's. Okay, and I think for this one we're going to just go with a 1v1 uh, on a snow map so we can see the Soviets' uh, structures on a, on a snow terrain. Um, and just go for it. Unit ready. Your command, 
Okay, Dwarf Factory. Dwarf Factory. Uh, we need to get a lot of defensive structures down so we don't get NG'd out the wazoo. Uh, supply center because Soviets don't get that tech at the start. Uh, these aren't machine gun turrets yet. Uh, not really. The howitzers aren't going to be, right? Uh, so we get one howitzer anyway. Um, guess we want to get a bunch of tanks. Okay, there's our howitzer. Um, War Factory. Okay. Oops. And rip. <laughs> So as you can see, the uh, AI is not something to uh, underestimate in the slightest. <laughs> it absolutely wrecked me in every single match I played. Uh, that said, like obviously, you know, if you are doing this in a more competitive setting where you're looking to try hard and absolutely destroy your enemy, there are ways to do it. Um, but it's really fun. Uh, it's definitely really challenging to see how much effort uh, has gone into it like the structures and stuff look really nice in both the winter and like the more standard um what would you call it uh green terrain settings are uh it looks really nice for the three factions from both america uh the soviets and china so real fun uh <laughs> i can definitely see myself jumping into this this mod a couple of times uh just to try out like the different crazy combinations i get a better feel for the tech tree uh, and know what units kind of counter what. Uh, I definitely recommend checking it out. I'll be sure to leave the link in the description uh, with the ModDB link on how to get it set up. Uh, also leave a link below for the anniversary Discord channel. So if you have any questions or queries or issues, you can by all means reach out there. Uh, if you like this overview in the video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and do all that good stuff. It helps me out a huge amount. Uh, but enjoy the rest of the Red Alert anniversary celebrations if I don't see you again. And take care. Thanks very much for joining.